And again, if you're hidden somewhere in an entertainment area for your duration that you're in Thailand, you're not going to network and certainly not going to meet people of influence who are going to open doors for you uh, because you can offer them something in return. Vigorous Steve here. I wanted to make a quick overview video for the guys that might be interested in coming to Thailand for a prolonged period of time. And whether that's for three months, six months, one year, maybe even indefinitely, this video should give you guys some insights and food for thought on how to prepare for a trip to Thailand that might last months or even years in duration and know how to get settled so you don't have to run around frantically like I did trying to figure everything out as you go along. So there's a lot of preparation involved before you decide to move to Thailand for a longer period of time, whether that's jobs, visas, where to live, etc., etc., etc. We're briefly going to discuss all these topics in this video. And if you would like me to clarify a little bit more in depth in a consecutive video, please let me know down below in the comment section um, so I can do additional research and dive really into the job situation or the visa situation or the gym situation for that matter. So this video is not in the context of coming to Thailand as a tourist for three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, for example. There's plenty of websites for that. And I'm going to assume that you have a decent amount of savings to bridge the period where you're traveling and I blow a load of money here and there just to have fun. So you can go to TripAdvisor, Travelfish, Wikitravel, Wikipedia even. Plenty of websites that aim towards shorter trip to Thailand and ensure that you have all the information you need for an amazing holiday. This video is mostly going to be about longer trips to Thailand, perhaps trips that are indefinite, so you can stay in Thailand long term and enjoy the country just like I do. And before we get into it, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm and consider subscribing if you haven't already. First things first, you need to prepare well. You need to have a financial situation in place where you can bridge the period for a couple months when you're in Thailand to really get grounded. And ideally, you have a good amount of savings, which I already made a video about discussing financial freedom. You can watch that here. I would advise you to watch that video first before we proceed. But if you already got your savings in place, then it's really not an issue. You just have to make sure that you have one year of saving at least three months, guys, not, not a month of savings because then you're just a tourist and it's not going to work out for you. You're going to blow through your money, especially the first month when you're still trying to figure this country out and get into a little bit of an overcompensation mode because there's so much fun stuff to do here. So you're going to blow a decent amount of money in the first month, maybe even the second month. And if you don't have a year to bridge income wise or saving wise, then, well, it's just going to turn out to be a holiday, not a long-term stay or a residency or a permanent stay. So keep that in mind. A lot of guys have been asking me in the comment section about the job situation. So let me address that briefly. Unless you have 10 years experience um, and are able to offer a unique perspective on what they have available as jobs in Thailand, then you might be able to find a job. So that's 10 years working experience, highly specialized in something. Because they're not going to give jobs away, which the Thais are able to do, to foreigners. Right? They want to keep the money in their country. They want to keep the money amongst the locals. And there's even a law that states that jobs cannot be given away to foreigners, which can be fulfilled by ties, right? Because otherwise a lot of foreigners would come here and some of the ties would be unemployed. Right? The whole idea to come here and work for somebody else, be employed, is an opportunity to network. So maybe the first year that you're employed here, this is, you know, generally speaking, a broad sense, whatever job you might do, the first year you're going to network and then make a name for yourself in, right, a social dynamic setting. So when people like you and they understand your skills, you might be able to get a better paying job somewhere else. So first you find a job online in anticipation of moving to Thailand. That can be through jobsdb.com. I'll list all the websites that I mentioned down below in the description section so you can click the link and do some additional research for yourself. So let's say you post your resume on JobsDB. You'll let that sit for a while, let the people show some interest or you start actively soliciting for jobs that are being posted on JobsDB Thailand. 
you might be able to get a job in advance, but you'll still have to go through the soliciting process, do a couple interviews, seal the deal, right? Write the contract and then go through the process of changing your visa from a tourist visa, for example, to a business visa. So it's a lengthy process and it might still take three months, four months. I've heard guys that come here that go through a soliciting process and really don't start their new jobs maybe three months after arriving. So you need a decent amount of saving to bridge this period or some residual income while you're transitioning from the job that you have back home to the jobs that you might have in Thailand. And honestly, most of them don't really pay well. You could bridge a period for a year where you're earning 35,000 baht a month, but you, you probably won't be able to save a decent amount of money. And right, life is good, but it's not awesome. <laughs> not that amount of salary. So I would advise everybody to make money online. And there's a million different methods to make money online. You can play online poker, you can trade cryptocurrency, you can do a YouTube channel. There's plenty of guys with a YouTube channel here. You can do online coaching, you know, market your clothing brands or affiliates or whatever else you're associated with. If you're an Instagram model, there's a million different ways to make money online. And if you want to move to Thailand for a prolonged period of time or permanently, or just move through countries as you please, making money online is the future. Because the only people I know that make good money in Thailand are the guys with 10, 20 years of experience working hospitality. So they're a very high position in a hotel, the CEO or uh, the ma branch manager where they oversee multiple hotels uh, that are in Thailand. Those guys make 300,000, some make 350,000 baht. Um, which sounds like a lot, right? That's over $10,000, which is, of course, a good amount of money. They get extra benefits where their kids are going to private school, all being expensed by the company that they work for. And they're able to get to their wives on top of the business visa because they're married. Right? So there's a lot of benefits in that setting, but you need to go through the grinder for 10 to 20 years first before you even qualify for a good paying job in Thailand. And unless you went to school with some half Thai kids in America, for example, one of the parents is a Thai, the other parent is an American, this is all an example, guys. You make friends with them, they go back to Thailand uh, through the family to have some sort of business setting, and you get invited to help out because you have a unique set of skills and you're friends with this person. So you have a way in, right? You already have a small network present allowing you to have one foot in the door in the Thai business scene uh, ahead of time, right? So that you create some opportunity that way. So you either need a ton of skills and a ton of experience, a foot in the door through a friend or some social contacts that you have ahead of time, or make money online. And all the people I know that stay here for years, they all make money online, right? They might have one business, three different revenue streams. Making money online is the future if you want to live abroad. All right, so that covers the money aspect. You need a visa. Most people are going to end up at a tourist visa. Tourist visa can be acquired in your country of residence. So there's usually an embassy or a consulate where you can go to and bring your itinerary, of your travel itinerary. Say, I want to go to Thailand. I want to stay for six months, for example. You get maybe one tourist visa of 60 days, maybe two, maybe three even. It depends on the consulate and the restrictions of your country. So please do additional research. And I'm not going to list all the consulates down below in the description section because, well, there's hundreds of countries out there. So that's something you're going to have to figure out by yourself. Get a tourist visa in advance as many as possible because the more tourist visas you have, the longer you can stay. Now, nowadays, there's a little bit of restrictions due to the pandemic. And of course, you need vaccinations before you arrive into Thailand to make the entry process a little bit easier because nowadays right, they only allow people that are vaccinated still have to end up in a quarantine and maybe in the future that will be resolved right this is uh, hopefully this pandemic comes to an end <laughs> who knows when that happens but at one point the transition into thailand will be a little bit less cumbersome for now you need a vaccine ideally two then you have to go into the quarantine and you get a special tourist visa for um, right, people that are interested in coming here um, in this, the Phuket sandbox or the soon to be opened Pattaya sandbox, where you arrive there directly 
you stay there, you quarantine there for a certain period of time, and then you're allowed to travel through Thailand reasonably hassle-free. When those restrictions are over, you maybe get a 60-day tourist visa or two of them. You extend the first one at Chiang Watana, and then you'll have to leave the country. Some people do border runs. Right? There's services for that, which come from all over Bangkok, Pattaya, Phuket, Chiang Mai, wherever else. You get in a van, you drive to Laos or Myanmar or Malaysia or Cambodia. You cross the border for a day. Right? You have to pay for a visa for Cambodia or the other countries. You cross back and then in the same day, you're right back in Bangkok. Some services offer a one-day stay in Laos or Cambodia or Malaysia, for example. So you can do a little bit of sightseeing. Or if you get a visa that takes one or two days to process, like a student visa, for example, or a business visa, then these services drop you off, give you ample time to process the visa, get your passport back with a new visa allowing you to stay for a year. And then they take you back, right? You pay a little bit of money for those services, but they're very, very convenient. So the first, let's say, three months that you're here, you're going to do two things. You're going to travel around, figure out where you want to settle, and figure out which visa you're going to have after those three months or six months that you're still on tourist visas. Because again, that's not going to be indefinite. It used to be a lot less restrictive, but now when they see multiple tourist visas, in your passport at one point the immigration officer is going to warn you and said hey this is not how it's meant to be done if you want to stay in thailand for a longer period of time get a legit visa and there's many different ways to get a legit visa whether that's a um, student visa right you study a language that's not your own so let's say you're from russia you come to thailand and you want to be an english teacher for example for example you're from Russia, you come to Thailand, you study English for a year or two, and then you do one or two of the online courses allowing you to teach English, albeit not to a sufficient salary, because again, you're a Russian, you're not a native English speaker, so the salary is going to be a little bit less, or just simply less job opportunities. So the first two years you study English, and then you start to teach English, switching you from a student visa to a business visa, right? This way you get to stay a longer periods of time, build your network, and hopefully progress through the ranks of business opportunities. But ideally you just make money online. Um, that saves you a lot of hassle. You can still do a student visa for maybe three years or four years even, depending on which study you're following. So if you do a study that is not a language, which what I would advise most people, maybe some sort of hospitality course, or a, uh, a very specialized course, which many of the schools offer, you'll be able to study that while you're making money online, for example. Now, a student visa doesn't give you so much opportunity to travel because you're supposed to be in Thailand to study. So your school is in a certain location and you have a couple hours every week that you need to be in class, uh, which you'll sign off for, allowing you to extend the visa because there will be a a paper or a term or you know exams that you need to complete before you can go into the second year of this study right and the second year is determined if you uh, finish those exams to satisfaction allowing you to progress to another year um, extending your student visa but if you want to travel around a little bit and also explore other parts of asia and just use thailand as your base right you fly in and out of thailand maybe six eight times per year then I would look into a Thai elite visa instead. And those are something you're going to have to request, especially through immigration. So you'll have to write them an email requesting a Thai elite visa. There's several different cards. They start at, I think, 400,000 baht for five years. And they come with a lot of opportunities, allowing you to stay travel into Thailand frequently. And uh, you don't have to study anything or do a business in Thailand, otherwise giving you a business visa. So this probably gives you the most freedom, but you'll have to dish out because they're certainly not cheap. When you calculate it down to um, the day rate, for example, so let's say you're spending your entire time in Thailand and you're spending um, 500,000 for a Thai elite visa over the duration of five years, that's 100,000 baht per year. So when you calculate that down to the day rate, you're spending 275 Thai baht per day to stay in Thailand on this Thai elite visa. 
sounds expensive and it is a little bit pricey, but it comes with a lot of benefits because now you don't have to go to school, spending not only money for the school, but preventing you from making money at the time that you're in school, right? It takes time to study another language or particular subject and do the exams, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It takes time. And during the time that you're in school, you could be making money. So you spend more money to open the door to make more money from your online business or wherever else your revenue streams are coming from. So it's for me, it was a no-brainer, but I'm here on a marriage visa because I'm married to my wife. And it's probably the best visa if you really want to settle here. But for that, you need to find a solid and reliable partner first which is a whole video subject in itself. I addressed it a little bit in this dating video, uh, but I don't mind doing another one uh, to go a little bit more in depth into the relationship aspect of being with a Thai woman. And then the last thing you need to do before moving here is liquidate all of your assets. You have a car, sell it. You have a condo or a house, sell it or sublease it if that's possible, right? You rent it to somebody else. Now you have a sustainable revenue stream. If you can't do that, sell it. Material possessions, sell them all. And the ones you're really attached to, for whatever emotional reason, move that into storage or at your parents' house. It should all fit in one box. Right? Don't get attached to material possessions because if you're going to move to Thailand, you're going to have to start fresh. You're starting over. And all that stuff that you have back home is all baggage. Whether they generate money for you or not, most of them are going to be expensive. As expenses, a car is going to be an expense. The more possessions you have moving into storage is going to be a higher expense because for storage, you pay for the amount of space um, that you're renting, right? To put your stuff in for later use. And while well, a condominium, right? Or a house that you own that you can rent to somebody else, even then you need somebody to manage that because renters, um, right? If something breaks in that house, you have the obligation to fix that. So, right, you, a lot of things you need to look into. I liquidated everything. You store what you want to keep and everything else you dispose of, turn it into money, and now you have money to bridge a period in Thailand where you're either not making money or have a jolly good old time. If you have a girlfriend that's a little bit wishy-washy and you're not really sure and you want to make another step in your life, end it. Sounds hard, but, <laughs> you know, a single in Thailand, you're going to have a lot of fun, right? You might have some bad experience, might have some good experience. Again, watch that dating video. If you if your relationship is not 100% rock solid and you both move to Thailand, that relationship is going to end within the first year. I see it happen many, many, many times. Couple comes to Thailand, relationship is anything but solid. And within six months, the girl goes back home because... Thai women will be able to sniff this. They will know that your relationship is rocky and they will try to get one foot in the door if they like the guy. Crack the door wide open. You will welcome them into your life wholeheartedly. And now the other girl, um, there's no room for her anymore because again, you're trying to uh, look at a greener pastures somewhere else. So again, if your relationship is anything but solid and you, you don't see this woman as potential wifey material, end it, move to Thailand. And you can try your luck here. If you want, you can also prepare the accommodation ahead of flying to Thailand. Now, of course, now due to the quarantine rules, your hotel that you're doing your quarantine is prepared ahead of time. And maybe after uh, going through that process for 11 days or 14 days or however long it is that you need to be in quarantine before being released into the land of smiles, um, you might want to have a couple accommodations shortlisted so you don't have to frantically search for places to stay after, um, well, you come out of um, COVID jail. You can do that on many different websites. I'll list the majority of them down below. I would suggest you do some additional research because there's a ton of different places where you can look for short-term accommodation, medium-term accommodation, and one-year contracts, for example. So they have condominiums, apartments service departments, um, houses even for rent, right? Or you could do a long stay in some of the hotels. Again, the the hospitality scene and the tourism industry has collapsed a little bit. So there's a lot of deals to be made in otherwise five-star hotels where you can stay for a longer period of time if you have the funds to back it up. Um, it really at a steal, at a bargain. So 
right? Do some preparation ahead of time where you want to stay and also figure out which cities you want to visit because there's a ton of different cities in Thailand and they all have their unique allure and downsides, right? Paddy is a great place to party, great for bodybuilding, a ton of gyms, but it is a little bit seedy and it attracts a little bit of um, funky foreigners, <laughs> you know, to pull it mildly. There's a, a ton of interesting characters in Pattaya. Now you have Phuket, very touristy. That's where a lot of foreigners end up for their first trip in Thailand. They have the Phuket sandbox going on right now. Decent for bodybuilders. I would say it's uh, thirds after Pattaya and Bangkok, but ton of beaches, a ton of things to do, right? Albeit that Phuket is a little bit more expensive. Now, Chiang Mai is a, a lot more laid back, also good for bodybuilding, a lot cheaper than most of the places in Thailand, but it's a very sleepy town without too much action. Of course, there's a lot of nature. If you enjoy motorbike riding, then Chiang Mai is a nice place to go because you can only exit the city in 10 minutes and then be in phenomenal mountains or even drive your way um, to the border of Myanmar and uh, find these minority tribes and all this stuff if you're interested in you know, doing a little bit more besides uh, your bodybuilding journey or your fitness journey. So Chiang Rai is also a nice place. Krabi, right? ton of different places that you can visit. And I would advise you to shortlist accommodation in a couple cities that you want to visit. Stay at least a week, ideally a month, right? to really get a feel for the city. And then compare a couple different places that um, sound appealing to you so you can find a place to settle for the long time afterwards. So maybe you come to Bangkok first, you go to Pattaya for a week, right? A week in Bangkok, a week in Pattaya. Then you go to Phuket for like a week and you're like, man, Phuket is nice. I'm going to extend it to two weeks. And after two weeks, you're like, you know what? I'm going to stay here. Everything that I've seen, Phuket is the best. Okay, you have uh, two other comparison points. You find some accommodation there, whether that's through an Airbnb or uh, a Thai apartment or Thai room finder. There's a ton of different websites which are all listed below where you can get pretty decent deals um, allowing you to stay for three months, six months, one year in duration. Again, make sure that when you book a condominium or an apartment for a longer period of time, that your visa matches the duration that you're signing the contract for. So if you're on a tourist visa for three months and you just signed a one-year lease, yeah, yeah, you, and somehow you, you're not able to extend your tourist visa and then uh, you're paying uh, or you're losing your deposit um, because, well, there's a deposit involved whenever you move into a new condominium and you might lose that if you're not able to fulfill your contractual obligations to the persons that are renting you your condominium. And then when you have your dream condominium looking out over the beach and it's still reasonably affordable, I mean, you can find a condominium on the beach for maybe 10,000 baht, even 5,000 baht, but, well, you're probably sharing that with 5,000 baht neighbors, which might keep you awake all night. I would at least spend 10,000 baht for a condominium, so that's about, what, $350, right? So you have some decent anemones. I think from 15,000 baht, so let's say 20,000 baht per month to play it safe, you'll get a decent condominium or apartment with a kitchen, a separate living room, a separate bedroom and maybe one or two bathrooms, maybe 40, 50, 65 square meters, depending on the location, right? And how much you're spending. Decent amount of anemones, right? If you've got a kitchen, you probably get a rice cooker in there, which I would just buy your own rice cooker. And then you need an electric stove and maybe an air fryer and, and all the good stuff that we need as a bodybuilders or people that are actively cooking all of their own meals um, because you want to remain in control of whatever you're putting into your body. Uh, you need some bed sheets and all that stuff. So let's say you have a condominium with decent anonymities and it's costing you 15,000 baht. To really settle in this apartment, you're probably going to need, I would say, another 15,000 baht to buy all the stuff that you're um, using in daily life. So that's a rice cooker, right? They're like a thousand baht. Cheap. I mean, you can get them even for 500 baht if you live by yourself and you don't eat so many carbohydrates. A 500 baht rice cooker will um, last you a year or two. At one point, it will all expire, right? But a 500 baht rice cooker will last you quite a bit. You can even boil eggs in it if you want to. You get an air fryer for your salmon, your beef, your chicken, etc. Those are like 600 baht, 800 baht, depending on the model. Super cheap also. An electric stove, 800 baht, 1200 baht. You get a pan, an electric pan. So right now you have three uh, electrical pieces of equipment that are not built in. 
and you can bring with you if you decide to move from Phuket, for example, to Pattaya, right? After three months, you're kind of bored. You put all that stuff in your suitcase and you go on your way to another destination. You bring your little electrical mini kitchen with you so you don't have to reinvest um, into those pieces of equipment when you arrive at your new destination. Bed sheets. And you can get all of this. You can buy at Big C or Tesco Lotus. You walk in, make sure you have 15,000 baht and you can buy anything. You can fill out your entire condominium with the basic anemones, right? You need a couple pillows, you need some bed sheets, you need a blanket, um, perhaps two blankets, what I would recommend, um, because you're going to be sleeping in the air conditioning, especially in the first three to six months that your body's kind of climatizing to this insane heat and humidity. I would advise you to get a body towel, which is about twice the size or maybe even three times the size as your regular beach towel. You can find them in the same places that they sell uh, regular towels. Usually in the pop and mom shops at the local market, they have like a, a little shop where they sell towels of all kinds of sizes. So whether that's to wash your hands or after showering or for the beach or complete right, two meters, two and a half meters uh, body towels that are very suitable to sleep under in this kind of weather. So if you put the air conditioning on moderately, right, not too cold, so you freeze to death. For you, that's going to be comfortable sleeping under a body towel. but if you have a guest over or a girlfriend, like my, me and my wife, we sleep separately, unfortunately, because I need to keep the room uh, temperature down quite a bit because of this uh, large Caucasian body and her smaller Thai frame um, would freeze to death underneath uh, the air conditioning if I blast it to a, um, a temperature that I feel comfortable in. So she has a, a thick blanket and I sleep underneath this body towel. So you have to uh, spend a little bit of money on that get two or three pillows, maybe two body pillows, right? All this stuff you can, or most of the stuff you can buy at Bixi or Tesco Lotus and should set you back uh, no more than 15,000 baht. So that will be your initial expense when you find a place to settle. And if you're smart, you've got the Grab application set up and ready to roll ahead of time. So when you finish your shopping spree and you've got everything ready for your condominium, all you have to do is start your Grab, schedule a Grab taxi, to pick you up, get a van taxi that's normally designated for the airports, a ton of room in the back seats. So you load it up and you're back home in a single trip because normal taxis will not be able to hold all the stuff that you just purchased. A single trip, you're back home and then you're basically settled. Now, when you're settled in the city that you liked the most, then you can finally start networking. There's a ton of different ways to network here in Thailand. And ideally, you have an in in the form of shared interests. So you go to a place where there's like-minded individuals to network with. And if you like golf, you simply go play golf and talk with the people there. There can be foreigners, there can be Thais. They all share a common interest with you. And that's your way in to strike up a conversation and slowly build up your network, develop friendships, and make this uh, trip open up a lot of doors. Because again, without a network here in Thailand, you will not accomplish anything. It's just surface level Thailand that you'll accomplish, not the deeper Thailand where you have business opportunities, see part of the countries which are otherwise unknown to foreigners. Right? You need an, a solid Thai network. And for that, you just have an in of shared interest. So I've met a ton of interesting foreigners and Thais through the gyms. That's my interest. I like to go to the gym. I like to be a bodybuilder. And I've visited gyms all over Thailand. And in most places, well, luckily for me, because I'm known in Thailand, right? I've coached many of many Thai people over the last decades, including my wife, who's um, became quite famous during the time that she was competing actively. So most of the gyms that I visit in Thailand, I'm already known. So my network is quite extensive. And I also know that many of the gyms here in Thailand will have its resident foreigner. So if you don't speak Thai... Most gyms, like the best gym in the city, for example, will have a foreigner present. And that's your trip advisor or wiki travel page where you can just ask questions that, hey, I'm new in town, I'm trying to settle here. Uh, can you give me some advice? And as your network grows and grows and grows and you start to know a lot more people of influence or people who have escaped the matrix and live life on their own terms, a lot of doors might open for you as well. Again, you need to be respected. You need to contribute something to Thailand directly. 
you need to offer something of value for these things to manifest. And again, if you're hidden somewhere in an entertainment area for your duration that you're in Thailand, you're not going to network and certainly not going to meet people of influence who are going to open doors for you uh, because you can offer them something in return. So that might take five years, 10 years or never. It really depends on how you behave yourself. I know a lot of foreigners are simply not behaving themselves in a way, um, allowing them to have an in into Thailand from a different level that is otherwise seen by foreigners. So again, this is something that you'll have to work on by yourself. It takes time. But once you're at that point where you're generally respected and Thai people feel that you're actually contributing something to Thailand and improve the country overall, whereas I feel that I've contributed a lot to the Thai bodybuilding scene, a lot of Thai bodybuilders ended up being more successful, which then trickled down to their clients and the people that they've helped uh, by some of the practices that I introduced into this country. So when people generally respect you and your social network is vast, um, life is amazing here, really. It, it will take time. And you again, you need to adopt the culture to a certain extent. Because again, guys, Thailand is a lot different from a cultural perspective compared to the Western world and most of the other Asian countries that I visited over the last couple of years. So if you're coming from the Western world and you hold on to these Western ideals and ideas, and you can't fault you for it because you grew up in the Western world, most likely. But if you hold on to that, you cling to that, and you come to Thailand and you don't adopt anything of the beautiful culture here, you're not going to be able to build your network because most of the former foreigners here have calmed down significantly and adopted some Thai ways of life. And the Thais are certainly that way, right? So you need to have patience. You need to handle yourself in particular situations where you would otherwise get mad, angry and frustrated and show it and start screaming and yelling. I mean, I've seen a lot of things go wrong here and this is definitely not the way to behave. So you need to reset almost both emotionally and culturally if you want to stay here a longer period of time and make your time in Thailand enjoyable, you probably need a little bit of a brainwashing in the form of traveling and calming down and relaxing and slowly becoming more patient and patient and patient as you're staying in Thailand because, well, not everything is going to go over smoothly. Um, ordering food might take way longer than you're expecting or trying to explain particular things in your best English or Thai might not go over as smoothly as you're expecting. And it's simply because you're a foreigner. It has nothing to do with the ties. You're a foreigner and everything that you're expecting is from your own little bubble that is no longer valid <laughs> when you move countries. So keep an open mind. Start adopting some of the things that are the culture here. Calm down. That would be my biggest advice. Calm down. Relax. Let things play out as they are. You will become good at crisis management because not everything is going to go smoothly, but certainly makes life around it 10 times easier. So adopt, 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 adopt the culture, the lifestyle, learn patience. And if you can do all of that within the first couple of months, which it took me a couple of years, to be honest, um, when you can adopt a little bit more, that is Thailand, the way of life and the culture. Life is good, dude. Life is so freaking good. It's, I don't ever want to go back. Let's put it that. That's a mild understatement. Um, but yeah, then this video would be twice as long to explain to you guys why. So I'll leave it at that. I think that's enough from the surface level to give you guys some ideas on how to prepare, move, and settle in Thailand. If you would like to see anything specific that I discussed in this video, let me know down below in the comment section and I might make a dedicated video for you guys so you can uh, prepare even better ahead of time. For now, we're done. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're looking for the most comprehensive guides to bodybuilding pharmacology, you can find the eBooks on my website, vigorsteve.com slash shop. Personalized advice, always available through consultations. You can find the rates in the consultations section. Follow me on Instagram at vigorsteve. Half tie, half amazing, front double bicep for the vigorous crew. You guys know what to do. 
At one point, I'm going to expect a lot of you here in Thailand pop up in the muscle factory. Steve, are you vigorous, Steve? Right, and come over. We'll have a quick old chat. I'm looking forward to that moment because really, my quality of life improved tremendously after moving here. And I would wish that on anybody, right? Unless you don't like Thailand for whatever reason, then you're better off staying somewhere else. But everybody that I know that lives here for a long time, yeah, life is very, very good. So I hope to see you guys soon. Till then, see you in the next video. And thank you so much for watching.